Hey guys, Lee with LG Speed and Custom here. Working on the 32 again. In the last video on the 32 when we left off, we had just sprayed this firewall in slick sand. I gave it, I think, six or seven coats of slick sand. And I have spent the last, spent last weekend and then a little bit more this weekend sanding it all. Oh man, it is so tedious. I hate it, absolutely hate it. Don't feel like I'm getting anything done because I'm just sitting here going, so I've got it to a point where, I don't know, I'm not happy with it. It still needs so much more. This firewall was so pitted in like over 20 years of doing automotive restoration. This was probably the most pitted piece I've ever like brought back. But like I said, it's, I'm not happy with it, but I'm at the point where I don't care anymore. It's in 220 right now. I should spray more slick sand on it and do it again, but it's, my theory is if I spray slick sand on it, definitely gonna have to sand it again. Or I can just seal it and paint it. There's a chance that I'm painting it Wimbledon white, which hides a lot. So, you know, there's a chance. Maybe I can live with it. It'll be fine. There's a couple little like pits here and there. I mean, it's a firewall. There's gonna be an engine sitting here and a fuel pump, so. It might be fine. If it's not, then I'll just sand it again. And really I'm like no further ahead than if I just sanded it or sprayed slick sand on it now. So I'm gonna take a little bit of a gamble on that. Problem is, it's a holiday right now. It's holiday Monday and I don't have any paint. So can't do anything until I get some paint on that. So I'm gonna spend the rest of the day working on the body. And when I say working on the body, I'm not gonna do any body work. I just don't want it to be orange anymore. We're going to pick it up with the forklift, move it over here to where the airline will reach, I'm gonna grab a DA sander and some 120 and just start sanding the orange off. Whatever's underneath is underneath. We're not gonna tackle that right now. I just probably sand all the orange off, spray paint it with like black rattle can primer and that will be good enough for now, because I just want to drive the car. I don't care about having a show car. I just want to have a fun 32 Ford that I can go rip around and do burnouts in. Well, no burnouts because it's a flathead, but I don't know, maybe if it's like, maybe if it snows, we can do donuts. <laughs> so let's get into it. All right, I'm gonna take you for a little walk around the car and we'll show you what's up with it. And then maybe then you guys will all be like, oh yeah, maybe you know what rattle can primer, it'd be okay for now. This body is pretty rough. It is probably in my professional opinion to make this car look like this car. There is probably about 800, maybe 700 hours there. That's a lot. 700 hours is a lot of time. It's probably a car that's worth doing that with. I mean, it is a 32 Ford. However, here's my situation. When this car is done, if this car did look like this, you know where this car is going to get parked? Right there, outside, in the elements. So it's just, you know, it's not going to, it won't stay like this for a long time. It'll look like the 47 in no time, which, you know, I'm fine with. If I had a nice place to park it, then maybe, yeah, I would consider giving it a nice paint job. But I don't. I don't have a garage to park it in. Shannon and I live in a 650 square foot apartment. And we have, this is our shop garage space, which is my working shop. I work in here every day. I can't fill it full of cars just to store and park. So that's why it's gonna get parked there, which is why we're not gonna worry about making it perfect. So here's some of the things that are going on here. Somebody shaved this cowl vent. Why, I don't know, because cowl vents are probably 
the coolest thing, the cowl vent that's in the 47, I use all the time. It's like air conditioning on your feet without actually having air conditioning. I have bought the replacement patch panel that has the cowl vent in. So we're gonna, we're probably gonna put that in. Uh, the chop, I don't know when the chop was done, decades before I was ever born. And you know what, it's, it's not the greatest, but I'm fine with it. I don't, it doesn't bother me. We've got some weird stuff going on here. We've got some weird stuff going on here. We've got, once again, the chop is, you know, not the best. We've got some weird stuff going on down here. This is all dented in. That's our door gap. Why it's doing that, I don't know. Right now, I'm not concerned about that though. Let's go over to the other side here. So, this is pushed in pretty hard. Somebody backed into something or maybe somebody drove into the back of it. Got more weird stuff going on here. Yeah, she's uh, this door, same thing. Got some weirdness going on down there. So yeah, let's just sand the orange off because I, I really don't like orange cars. This thing looks like a pumpkin to me. It looks like it came from Home Depot. So we'll sand all that off. Whatever's underneath is underneath. I'm not gonna worry about it. And then maybe we'll spray, not right away, but we'll get it ready to start spraying some, some just black primer on it. We got a box of some 120 and the DA. DA stands for dual action, by the way, meaning that it spins this way, but then it also goes like that at the same time. So it does dual actions. And we'll just start sanding. Well, I got the cowl panel stripped down and it's actually, you know, considerably better than I thought. There was a big spot of unsanded body filler here, but it was actually, there's just like a little dent right there. And we got a little dent here, but you can get to the backside of the panel. So that's no big deal. I've cleaned it all up. A Little bit weird down there, but once we get this stripped off, you know, we might be able to put a little piece in there if I decide to get super carried away. Now, before anybody comments on there, oh, you should just clear coat it like this. That's some sick patina, bruh. That's not patina. This is not patina. This is just, you know, a panel with the paint sanded off. Totally different. This is real patina. Note the difference. Totally different. And sanding your paint off and clear coating it is not patina. Sorry to uh, disappoint you guys. Oh, hi, Doris. Well, I've got the door stripped down from the belt line down. It's not as nice as the cowl panel. It's got some, it's definitely got some uglies down here. I think this whole corner is just made out of body filler. So it probably needs like the, the I think the best way to fix this would to be just put a whole new door skin on it, probably from the belt line down, but uh, I'm not gonna do that today. That'll be a project for a, another day. Well, it's four days later and I've got paint for the firewall. Jim over at Rondex, I wanted Wimbledon white and they're having, still having huge supply issues years later. So he said, I can't do Wimbledon white exact because he doesn't have the right stuff for it, but because it's a firewall and it's not gonna be next to anything else, he said he can make up his own mix, the Jim special that is very close to Wimbledon white and it's gonna look fine because it's not gonna be right side by side next to real Wimbledon white. So the firewall 
is ready to spray. I'm gonna give it a coat of sealer and then we'll spray some white on it. I got a bumper stand set up outside. So we'll move the firewall out there and then mix some primer up. Primer sealer, that is. Okay, so this is a different kind of primer than I normally use. This is Transtar sealer primer, which I think is related with Rondex, like where I get my paint and body stuff from. Oh, we need a screwdriver to open this. Hold on. Okay, we got a screwdriver now. So yeah, we're gonna try this sealer primer. I've heard good things about it, so I already had it. I've actually had it for quite a while, as you can see by how dusty it is. Now, regulars who have watched me paint stuff know that I never have paint sticks, ever. I always forget to get them while I'm at Rondex. Well, Mike Jones, longtime supporter of the channel, sent me 100, 100 or 500, a lot of 100 paint sticks, way more paint sticks than I can use in a while. So we got our paint sticks covered. However, while I was at Rondex today getting the paint for the firewall, you know what I forgot to get that I ran out of the last video? Mixed cups. So we're <laughs> gonna use some bubbly mixed cups. I cut the lid off of, uh, or cut the top off these two cans, blew them out so they're nice and dry inside. And because they don't have the mix ratio on them, I drew it on the paint sticks. So our sealer is four to one, four parts primer to one part activator to one part reducer. So I drew that ratio out on here so we can go up, put our primer up to that line, our activator to that line, and our sealer to that line. I did the same thing with our paint. This is just Nason single stage paint. It's not high end stuff, but it works great for driver kind of stuff like what we're doing. And it is a eight to one to two ratio, meaning eight parts paint to one part activator to two parts reducer. So this can sit over there because we're not worried about it yet. We got to get some sealer on here. So we'll bust this guy open. I should probably put my gloves on at this point because pouring out of a fresh can is always, they make these cans so hard to pour out of. Oh yeah, look at that, great. Let's get some gloves out here. These are seven mil gloves, the thick ones. They almost feel like dishwashing gloves. And the reason I use those is because this stuff dissolves gloves, which is why I wear gloves because if it dissolves gloves, imagine what it's gonna do to your skin. Actually, the main reason I wear gloves, I used to, when I was younger, I worked in the paint and body industry a lot and I, like full time, that was my job. And I never wore gloves, ever. And my hands were always covered. I had Bondo in all my fingernails all the time, primer on my hands, paint on my hands, didn't care at all. I was like 20, 21, 22. And I was working with this guy. And one day he came up to me and he said, hey, you know what? Your girlfriend would probably appreciate it if you wore gloves. And I was like, huh, never thought of it that way. Now we got gloves. All right. Let's put that there and give it a little pour. We don't need a lot. We're just, just doing a firewall. Oh God. Oh God. Okay, we need more than that. Hold on. There we go. I knew this was gonna happen. That's why I've got the shop towels ready to go. Okay, and okay, we'll call that, that's good. You can tell, because I've covered my line. All right, shop towel again. You know, I think in one of the last, or a video, somebody showed me a way to pour out of these without getting a spill, but I don't remember. Okay, where are we at? Oh man, we actually nailed it. We are right on the line, perfect. Okay, just put that there. 
This is a disaster. <laughs> I don't do paint and body regularly anymore, which is why I am so poorly set up. I don't have a mixing room. This is my fabrication bench. All right. That's good. And the reducer. So all the reducer does is makes this thin enough that it sprays nice through the gun and then it just evaporates. It doesn't have anything to do with the actual mixing or the chemical reaction that happens with paint to make it hard. Okay, put this on. Not gonna close it up just yet because we might Need more? Went over my line again. Okay. Perfect. Okay, all the real painters are probably finding this hilarious. But you know what, it works. It'll get the job done. And I mean, we're still one step up above rattle cans, right? Okay, let's pour this in our gun and go outside and spray it. Okay, I've got my jacket on, even though I think today was the hottest day of the year so far. It's really hot today, because I don't want my arms to get sticky. So, as always, we're just going to give our first coat a little light coat, and then we'll go heavier on the second coat. Okay, our sealer's done. Let's go mix up some paint. We'll give this a few minutes to flash and then spray our Wimbledon, our pretend Wimbledon white. Jimbleton white, that's what I'm gonna call it. Okay, hopefully this is a little more manageable to pour because it's a considerably smaller Container. Where'd my screwdriver go? Yeah, this is gonna work out great, I can tell already. Oh yeah, there's the color. Wow. Creamy. Like Bailey's. You ever drink Bailey's from a shoe? Just maybe like one person is gonna get that reference. All right, the pour. Beautiful. Okay, where is our towel? Give this lip a little wipe. I might have enough left over to paint the rims on the meteor this color. You guys think that'd look good? Wait, the Meteor video might not even be out by the time you guys watch this. You guys might not even know what I'm talking about. I was working on, I bought a 59 Meteor a few months ago, and I was working on that today. I was filming most of the day until it got too hot. And then I came inside and did nothing for the rest of the day, which is why at eight o'clock at night, I am now back here 
painting a firewall because it's kind of cooled down enough where it's comfortable to work again. Okay, there's our activator. And now the reducer. Perfect. That's what's hissing away. So this should be lots because I got, I think three coats on the top of the firewall and then I gave it one coat on the bottom. And yeah, I realized that I'm gonna have marks where my stand is, but the backside is also gonna get like a firewall pad and stuff. So you'll never really see it. It's mostly just to keep it from flash rusting. This looks like a glass of milk. Okay, let's uh, dump this in our paint gun. And then go outside. Paint it white and we'll call it a night. I just made that up. This looks exactly like milk. Well, there we have it. Is it show car perfect? Absolutely not. But is it considerably better than it was? Yes, I think I can live with this. If you get like super close up, uh, it's probably hard to tell on camera, but you can still see some of the pits in there. But I think once everything's assembled, you know, it'll completely disappear. You won't even see them. I think we're gonna call this good enough. So we'll let this dry overnight and maybe tomorrow we can put it on. I gave the inside a little dusting as well. Like I said earlier, just mostly to keep the flash rust off. That's the next morning and this is still a little bit fresh. I don't want to start messing with it just yet. And it's still nice and cool out. It's early enough that the sun isn't blasting away yet. So I think I'm gonna spend the rest of the morning back stripping the paint on the body, except for, instead of sanding it, I'm gonna use some paint stripper. I don't know why I didn't think of that the other day. I have paint stripper. I've used paint stripper lots. Shane stripped all the suspension with paint stripper on this car, so I just kinda of completely forgot about it the other day. So we'll move the body over here by the door, get some paint stripper and start brushing it on. So here's what we're gonna use. This is just aircraft paint stripper. You just put it on with a brush. Use your thick gloves, cause this stuff, it will, it will mess you up. And then we've got some paper towel, just in case we have any whoopses. If you get it on your skin, you'll definitely know it stings a lot and just go wash it off with some water. But try to avoid your skin. Um, yeah, you just dump it on. Some people will put it in like a little cup and then brush it on, but I'm just gonna probably pour some on right there and start brushing.
So once it starts bubbling and festering and doing all that stuff, you can just take a putty knife, start scraping it. Pressure washer works as well. I don't have a pressure washer. I used to borrow Doug's, but Doug moved back to Alberta. So his pressure washer went back to Alberta. Scraper will work though. Well, after a couple minutes with the scraper, that is considerably less stuff on there. So I'm gonna hit that with the DA sander now. Uh, I gave, I had a little bit left over on my brush, so I gave this one more coat. There's a lot of body filler right there. And body filler and paint stripper doesn't work the best. The door, I don't think I put it on heavy enough. And I'm not gonna worry about it now. I'm gonna get the cowl stripped and then move on to the door. But I think with the door, what I'm gonna do is give it another coat and then put some plastic over it to stop it from, I think it's like evaporating before it has a chance to do its thing. So if we put some plastic over that, it'll kind of help it sit in there and fester a little more. But we'll worry about that later. We'll focus on the cowl, one panel at a time. So a little bit of 120 again. <laughs> gonna save a lot of time and a lot of sandpaper sandpaper is expensive well, I've got the cowl all stripped down now it's a bit ugly down in here it's had a patch welded in right there and some welds there welds there it's pretty crunchy but I'm not gonna worry about that right now I'm just gonna move on to I don't know if I want to start the door or start doing the windshield frame Gave the door a second coat. Look at that. Isn't that satisfying? That made quick work of that. I think that took nine minutes to get this door pretty much all down the bare metal. Obviously I gotta go over it with the sander still, but nine minutes. Well, Jim and I have been plugging away on this thing in between jobs for the last few days and we've got her just about all stripped down. The more we take off, the better it looks, which is kind of the opposite of what normally happens. So it's kind of it's starting to drizzle on us now. So we're going to bring it inside out of the rain and take this monstrosity out. Man, there's like 500 bucks in wood there. So this thing is screwed down from the top. And then wrapped, so we just gotta peel this off and then we can get all the screws out. Well, that was gross. I don't know what it's painted with. Some kind of tar stuff. It's really sticky. But it came off rather easy. So remember, 
when we first took this car apart, we used to uh, make the joke that this guy probably worked at Home Depot or something. I think that might have been the situation because there was, up front here, I don't know if you can see, there was like four rows of screws down that entire thing. Like, probably easily a couple hundred bucks in screws, plus all this lumber and whatever this tar stuff is. So, I think he might have actually worked at Home Depot. Uh, I don't have a plan for here forward, so I don't know what to say. Well, it's two weeks later, and in two weeks, I haven't touched this thing, haven't done anything to it. Jim and I have been so busy in the shop. Normally, I work on this car every Friday. I take Fridays off and just work on the 32, 32 Ford Friday. But the last, I think, three Fridays, I haven't been able to do that. And in the meantime, we've got Aaron's 33 Ford is back from paint. So we've been putting that back together. We've got Rob's 35 Ford in. We're doing an AccuAir install on that. And um, the 41 Ford that we did the T5 video on, that's obviously gone. Some progress that did happen. Check this out. Christian from Headlines Pinstriping. We've been to his place before. He's got a great YouTube channel on his little pinstriping venture. He went to town on the firewall. Doesn't that look great? I love it. It's absolutely perfect. So we have had a little bit of progress on that. Uh, did everybody watch the 59 Meteor video, Resurrecting the 59 Meteor? For those that didn't, at the end of that video, said how I was gonna sell that 59 Ford because I just, I got too much on my plate. Well, good news is when I said I was gonna put it up for sale and sell it to a younger person, this young kid out of Kelowna bought it like literally the next morning. So it's gone, went to a great home. He's a up and coming hot rod builder, high tone customs in Kelowna, great guy. So I'm excited to see what he's gonna do with that car to take it to the next level. And one of the reasons I sold that car is because I had too much on my plate, right? Well, literally the day that the 59 Meteor left, all this stuff showed up. I bought a dog's breakfast of hot rod parts. 32 chassis back there. Oh, I got these wheels at the swap meet the other day. Some, uh, they're not real Halibrands, but they look like Halibrands. Good enough for me. So yeah. I've got all this stuff here. This came from my friend Bruce Donnellan, who I've talked about a lot on this channel, great guy up in Northern Washington. He texted me a few weeks ago and was all like, hey, you know anyone looking for a Model A Roadster? And I was like, yeah, actually, as a matter of fact, my friend Zach is looking for a Model A Roadster. So Bruce sent me some pictures of this Model A Roadster project that he had just found, and he just wanted a couple parts out of it and then was gonna sell the rest. So Zach was interested in the body, but he wasn't interested in the rest of the car. So I bought the rest of the car. And that includes, we've got an original 32 chassis over here that's being pinched for a Model A frame. It's got these really cool flathead mounts. They're really high. I'm not sure why they're so high, but they're high. Uh, this looks like a 35 to 40 rear cross member that's being turned into a transmission cross member. It's got some quarter elliptical springs which uh, my friend Richard was super stoked about. He's a quarter elliptical guy. And a uh, big kick up in the back. So we've got that. It also came with, we've got an APA flathead here of unknown condition. I'm assuming probably treat that as a core. Maybe it has a Merc crank in it though, I don't know. But it does have some Edelbrock aluminum heads, which would look great on the APA that's in the 32. Uh, we also got a T5 with a homemade adapter, so that's pretty cool. I think this is a Mustang T5 because the S10 ones that most hot rod guys use as shifters up here. But I've used Mustang ones before; they work okay. Just the, they work really good on like a channeled car where you sit like further back. Um, also got an original 32 grill shell out of the deal, and a radiator with flathead mounts in it, so that's super cool. 
We've got some 15 inch, which would probably make these Merc wheels. So full set of those. Oh, what else do we have here? We've got this really cool seat. Fortunately, Bruce was not able to find the other seat. This came out of a, an estate sale. Everything was in, I think, a basement. So he wasn't able to find the other seat, but we got one seat, which is, you know, good enough for a race car. And some other cool stuff. We've got a Halibrand quick change with some early Ford bells that someone has started putting nine inch ends in there. We've got some nine inch axles to go with that. Some wishbone stuff, a single header. Don't know where the other header is. Schroeder steering box setup. So that's really cool. I'm excited about that. Those look like some 32 frame horns, bunch of other stuff. We've got some spindles, some chrome spindles. These are, I think 40, there's a square one. So those should be like 46 to 48 style. Nice drop on those. That looks really good. Another set of 46 to 48 spindles, some F1 shock mounts. This is all quick change parts down in here. Bunch of axle cores for, for dropping. I think I owe Bruce an axle for, for all of those. And yeah, just, you know, a whole bunch of stuff here. So before I jump back on the 32, I gotta figure this, I gotta organize all this stuff, figure out where I'm gonna put it, what I'm gonna do with it. I don't even know why I have this stuff. I don't need any of this stuff. <laughs> so it was total impulse buy, but We'll use it eventually. We'll build a car out of it one day. In the meantime, though, no, I just, like I said, I gotta figure out where to put it. So, we're not gonna keep working on this today until we get this fixed. Okay, we've kind of got a handle on things now. We've got one box I don't know what to do with. We've got a single header in there, a collector that doesn't match, and a pair of master cylinders that I think are brand new but are pretty crusty. I don't know if they're worth rebuilding or not. This pile of stuff here is to go up to the third floor mezzanine, probably one piece at a time. Everything else is tucked away up there awaiting future builds. We've got the Schroeder box is sitting here. I'm gonna take that over to my friend Gordy Alberg's, the guy who we built the Arden 32 Roadster for. He's friends with Gary Schroeder, so he's gonna look into getting, missing the output shaft on this. So he's gonna look into that. Don't know what to do with him yet, that's Lux. And this, I just mocked up and put up on Marketplace for sale with the idea that if it sells, cool, it sells. And if it doesn't, then we'll just add it to inventory and build it when the 32 is done. But in the meantime, I don't really have a spot to put it. So if it sells, it'll kind of help me out because then I don't have to store it anymore. But if it doesn't sell, we'll figure it out. So I think we're gonna, end this video here and then we'll start a fresh one doing some of the metal work on this it doesn't need a lot a lot of the body filler that was like cracked and flaking out of there was just like little dents here and there that you know could have easily been fixed so we'll probably do those it's going to need door scans i don't know if i'm going to tackle that now or maybe drive the car for a bit and then deal with the door skins uh bruce threw in he said, you can use these fenders for patch panels on, to like fix my current fenders, but these rear fenders that he gave me are way better than the fenders that I have. So I'm not gonna use those for patch panels at all. I'm gonna use those fenders. That one, maybe we'll patch where the spare tire opening goes, because I'm not gonna run a spare tire on there. But we'll do that on another video. So thanks everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. As always, check out lgspeedcustom.com to get some LG Speed and Custom merch. All the support is very much appreciated. It's 
basically what keeps this channel going. YouTube doesn't really pay that much, so that's where uh, a lot of the income comes from. So anyways, we'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks for watching.